so much more abundance in all forms. When I talk about wealth, I mean wealth, but I, I mean everything. Trust, love, connection, joy, passion, all of that. It's just more fun when you're fully yourself because it takes so darn much energy to be something that you're not. That's Rebecca Weiner McGregor, and this is the Powerful Ladies Podcast. Hey guys, I'm Kara Duffy, a business coach and entrepreneur on a mission to help you live your most extraordinary life by showing you that anything is possible. People who have mastered freedom, ease, success, those who are living their best and most ridiculous lives, and those who are changing the world are often people you've never heard of until now. When you hear the word hypnosis, what comes to mind? Is it creepy guys at country fairs making people squawk like a chicken? That's where I went. (laughs) Well, today's guest is going to radically transform what hypnosis is for you and how it can be the answer you've been looking for. Rebecca Weiner McGregor is a certified hypnotist, coach, educator, and all things breakthrough to your best life. In this episode, we get into what hypnosis really is, how it works, And we have a great discussion about how each of us can really get to honoring our sacred life and even defining like what that even means. So I can't wait to hear your feedback. I hope you enjoy the episode. Well, I'm so excited I get to talk to you this afternoon. I'm happy to be here with you too. Let's just jump right in and tell everybody who you are, where you are, and what you're up to. All right. Uh, I'm Rebecca Wiener McGregor. I am on the border between Minnesota and South Dakota in the USA on a lake. And um, what have I been up to? Was that the other thing? What am I up to? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've been up to (sighs) figure out my next steps for the year. I had a little delay at the beginning of the year. I got sick right at the end of the year. And so things are so little on delay this year. I'm trying to give myself a lot of grace for that, which is new to me. (laughs) Yes, that seems to be a theme this year. Um, Mm -hmm. Everyone was so excited to step into 2022. And whether it's clients or colleagues, friends, everyone's feeling a little bit of like an adjustment period in January, whether it's a slower start than they expected or needing to do some con marring before they can actually get going. <laughs> right. Like there's a little bit of like resistance cleanup that I feel like a lot of people are in the space of. So you're in good company. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> uh, so for everyone who's wondering, you know, who's on here today and when, how do you m- impact the world? What, what is your business and, and job and, and how do you change lives? Cause you have lots of ways that you do that. Yes. Uh, I'm a hypnotist and a coach and uh, I help people where I started was helping people heal trauma. And mm-hmm. I still do that. Um, I help them heal trauma to really release anxiety, panic, rage, um, grief, stuckness, that kind of thing. And help. I also help women to release limiting beliefs around success wealth, love, relationships, trust, all of that Mm -hmm. kind of thing, so that you can live your very best life, the one that you have inside of you, the vision for your life that you have inside. What I think is so interesting about this is, you know, we've, we've, I've had people on who, who work in the trauma space and who are coaches, Mm -hmm. but you're a hypnotist. And how does one decide that's what I want to be? Oh, that's such a great story. I did not decide this. I didn't go to my like counselor in high school and say, hey, help me become a hypnotist, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought I was going to be a family therapist because something happened in my family when I was young. We all have this story, this long and winding road, right? And um, I remember sitting in the family therapist's office thinking at that time with that person, I, I do see the value in family therapy for sure. Mm -hmm. And thinking there has to be a better way for us to do this, for us to be more authentic. Because it was like we were pretending that everything was okay and things were not okay. 
Yeah. And so that was going to be my path to go into that field. And I got my undergrad in psychology and uh, I did graduate work in health psychology. And meanwhile, I was working in the banking industry. That was really boring for me. (laughs) (laughs) But I made a really great friend. And he's still a great friend to this day. But in this job that I really didn't like, I had this oasis of this friend. And he came to work one day. He had watched a movie about hypnosis. And he said, what do you know about hypnosis? And I just scanned my mind. There were two paragraphs in one psych book that addressed hypnosis, you know, kind of just very quietly. And at the time I was dealing with, I'd say mild to moderate, more leaning to the moderate side of social anxiety. I've been hiding from life for about three years. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, I think you could really help a lot of people with this. Like what a great friend, right? (laughs) And so he said, what do you, should we learn hypnosis? And he was my best friend. So I thought, sure. Was it, yeah, that was like as enthusiastic as it was going to get at that time, mm-hmm. right? Sure. And I said, you find us a great teacher, put all the responsibility on him. See how I did that. And uh, I said, you find us a great teacher and I'll, I'll go. He found us a great teacher and then he ditched me. He didn't <laughs> end up going. I know. So perfect. And at that time in my life, it was not in my usual way character to go and do this by myself because I was scared a lot of the time. And uh, I did the work, all the months of work in advance, went to the residency and I got lost on my way there. That was back in the day where I had like instructions and and an actual folding map. (laughs) And uh, excuse me. And we got there. I got there and I couldn't find it. And I was just praying, like, just show me the way, show me if this is meant to be, show me the way. And my street popped up right in front of me. And I put everything I had into those classes. And I walked away with no social anxiety anymore. Wow. It's been gone in May. It'll be 18 years. Wow. That's how it became my passion to help people unlock their pain, their limiting beliefs, release all that stuff it gives me goosebumps thinking about it right now because it changed my life. I remember just the energy shift and the shift in my idea of possibility in my life. And I wanted it for everybody. I still want that for everybody. What, how is it in a scientific perspective that that hypnosis works? Like, what is it accessing that you can't access in an, in another format or maybe not access as quickly? What I will truly love about hypnosis is that it is swift mm-hmm. and it is focused concentration. So you close your eyes, not because you're sleeping. You know, let's face it, hypnosis is a funny looking little word. And uh, we think it means all sorts of things based on what the word is and what we've seen in the movies. But really it is focus and concentration that allows you to shut off all the outside stimuli and really focus on what's happening inside. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we can get to memories that are associated with the physical responses that we have of, we'll use panic as as an example. So maybe someone has like pounding heart when they get really nervous. It's just cranking. Mm -hmm. We can use that focused, concentrated state to get to the experience that caused that feeling. Okay. So swiftly. And then with the techniques that we use, we reframe the experience. We neutralize the experience. Essentially, we talk about it until it's very boring. (laughs) And, And then we look for the lessons in it and find that deep acceptance. And what's so cool about that is it breaks the connection between that experience and your physical, emotional, behavioral response. And every time that file is accessed Mm -hmm. as a reference in the future, it's got acceptance and peace and calm in it rather than fear, anxiety, panic, guilt, shame, doubt, that kind of thing. And is hypnosis good for anybody or is it like for, would you recommend it for a certain type of of clients or is it really across the board 
it work it can work for people who can follow the instruction right mm-hmm. um the people that it that i have struggled personally to work with are teenagers because their parents <laughs> want it to be want them to heal rather than they want to express themselves the way they are right mm-hmm. so it feels like that's a that's a group of people that i'd rather work with, with an adult so most i've worked with people from ages 3 to 98 by the way And yeah, that's been really fun. But the person who really wants to shift is willing to put in the effort and is willing to have a little skin in the game. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, coupled with that effort, like they're willing to do the the things that aren't so easy. Mm -hmm. And that means that we're not bypassing emotions anymore, that we're exploring them and we're feeling. Mm -hmm. So people who are motivated to heal and to change and who um, are willing to get to a place where they're not scared of emotion anymore, because that's what happens when you let yourself feel it. You're not scared of it anymore. Yeah. And, you know, so much of coaching and therapy has moved into a virtual space. They now Mm -hmm. have like teletherapy and other things. Can you do hypnosis? um virtually or remotely or do you need to be with someone you can do it virtually and i'm very very grateful that i i had a someone reach out to me from across the country who wanted to work with me back in 2018 Mm -hmm. and i thought you know if i open this up to a virtual space then i can work with people from anywhere Mm -hmm. and so i was i'm very thankful i was ahead of the game so i didn't have to make any adjustments (laughs) when things when things went virtual and now i've worked with clients in australia new zealand all over europe spain canada all over the united states and hawaii in just a short amount of time because people are looking for that people are Mm -hmm. looking for that healing and what's really cool is i see zoom for example whatever application you like but these kinds of applications as transformational tools we don't have to look at it like it you know we're Mm -hmm. coming together but it's but it's just virtual you know (laughs) when we tune into each other we can be loving Mm -hmm. and we can be really focused and some of my clients say it's actually easier than being in an office because there's nothing for me to look around at and be distracted at yeah by they just get to be with me and we really create a, a loving space something that the client feels really safe in. When they get to be in their space, right? Which yes. is huge because just going to someone else's unfamiliar, weird space can be <laughs> triggering all by itself. Right. Where do I park? What door do I go in? How early do I go? All that stuff. Mm-hmm. And when they're in their homes or their offices, most of the time they're in their home, they're mm-hmm. in their comfy chair or they're snuggled in their bed. These are all really nice, safe places that contribute to that mm-hmm. comfortable, that comforting feeling. Is is hypnosis something that is part of like licensed therapy space or is it like an add-on? Like I, I know a lot of people who are trained in certain and licensed therapists when they but they've moved into a coaching space because it allows sure. them to work in different mediums. So mm-hmm. where does hypnosis fall? Hypnosis is, so I started as, I am certified hypnotist Mm -hmm. and you can get, you as a licensed therapist, Mm -hmm. I've had people, therapists reach out to me to teach them how to do it, or they can usually take some classes to get an understanding of it for their continuing ed, things like that. I don't know a lot who've gone through the full certification, but that's, you know, in my tiny corner of the world. It's yeah. definitely something that can be added in as a modality like EMDR. Or yoga or something. Yeah. Yes, okay. exactly. Exactly. Okay. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so fascinated by that because there's such a, so many people are leaning in on getting the support they need to be their best in whatever space yeah. that is. And right. I think it's really interesting which uh, modalities are like approved by the licensing board and which aren't. And I really see that struggle people are going through between, I know I can help you, 
but I have to help you. Can you walk out the door and go into my coaching office? Because I can help you over right. there. I can't help you in my like licensed therapy office. And I think that's so interesting, the the limitations we're putting on on people who um, have so much access to help people. Right. Um, but you mentioned you get a lot of referrals, I'm sure, too, right? Of people who mm-hmm. aren't certified. They're like, okay, we're going to bring you in as the expert in hypnosis. Right. Mm-hmm. It's often um, a therapist who feels like they're so close to making an impact. Mm-hmm. The therapy isn't quite working because the the trauma needs to be healed. So they might take like a three-month pause, that person come and work with me, mm-hmm. heal the trauma so the therapy can actually work, especially if it's family therapy, couples therapy, or even, um, you know, could it even be business coaching? Mm-hmm. You know, something like that where there's just a block yep. inside that's and when we have one a block inside of us, it affects every area of our lives. So yes. I'm really grateful and thankful that I get to work with those people and then they can step back into whatever they've been doing. I've been mm-hmm. part of a team many, many times. Yeah. And that's fun too. Well, I was so impressed on your website that it, you know, from the outside looking in, it seems like you've done such a great job of creating your your value ladder of different ways you can help people, whether it's mm-hmm. through coaching or communities or courses you have. There's so many options you have for people to access your skills. Was that intentional? Did that happen over time? Like, how did you re- decide what products and services you wanted to have for your your people? Mm. That it was totally unintentional. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just love people and I want to help. So I started to want to create different ways to connect. And it was probably eight, nine years ago when I started noticing a lot of my clients were dealing with money gunk. That's what mm-hmm. I like to call all the limiting beliefs is gunk. Yes. So um, limiting beliefs around success and what's possible for them. What can I create for myself? Um, what do I deserve? How, how much money can I charge? All of that kind of stuff. And those questions kept coming up. So I developed a course to try to help people on that specifically because the same topics were coming up. I, I network a lot with entre- female entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And so they're my client base, which is really fun. And then I get to see, okay, this same person in this industry is struggling with the same thing. And it kept popping up all over the place. Mm-hmm. And so that became a, an easy extension. Like, let's put all the knowledge I have about this in here. And I keep adding to it. It's really fun to have a course, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I keep adding to it. And um, that's a really, I don't know. My job sounds kind of serious and intense. And I can be kind of serious and intense. But all of it is so much fun for me Mm -hmm. because I get to interact with people on their journey. And that is a really sacred place to be for me. Well, it's such a, you know, fun and rewarding place. And you get to see people just grow into how powerful they are. Like it, it lights me up to see someone like kicking ass. And I'll be like, do you realize how much you've changed in like two sessions or in you know, if it's six months, like this is everything you've done. Like, do you even recognize yourself? Because I don't recognize the person who called me for the intro call. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When I had my office in person, when it was just the traditional office, that was all I was doing. My office manager, who was my mother-in-law, how cool is that? (laughs) She would say her favorite part of the day was watching people come in to meet me for the first time. And they would look kind of scared, of course, natural Mm -hmm. and kind of gray, like just, just not quite feeling themselves and then leaving and witnessing them feel that light energy again, just having a light in their eyes and excitement Mm -hmm. and hope for the future. And that's the power of giving a person hope and guidance and Mm -hmm. directed potential. Like this is what's possible for you. And having that conversation and unlocking that is so exciting. And then the sessions come and that's such a, that's such a fun place to be. Like you said, in six months, look what you've done in mm-hmm. just a couple of sessions. Look what you've created. 
And I love to give my clients stretches sometimes. <laughs> they get a little they get a little nervous sometimes when I say, okay, I want to give you something that's going to stretch you a little bit. And when they deliver, that's an, there's another up leveling that happens like, oh, I didn't think I could do it. And yeah. here I am, I did it. And now I know that I can trust myself on a different level. Mm-hmm. All of those things are fun and exciting, like you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. When when did you decide to be an entrepreneur? Oh, let me see. I was maybe 14. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. It's been in there for a long time. My parents are entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. They had a restaurant and um, actually, quite funny enough, they had a company that made inspirational and motivational plaques back in the 80s. And with lots of, you know, I'm so fascinated by words and quotes and uh, the power of words and how quotes have history lessons in them and all Mm -hmm. that good stuff. And um, so they've done all sorts of things like that. My parents have had other businesses and I think I got the bug from them. And then as it developed for myself, it was desiring to make my own rules, make my own schedule, that kind of thing, and do what I wanted to do rather than being boxed in. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like you're being boxed in if you're not really an entrepreneur, I think. It really feels like that if you're an entrepreneur. 100%. Yes, it's the the freedom, right? The freedom to get to do it uh, your way. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So of course we're on the Powerful Ladies podcast. So when you mm-hmm. hear the words powerful and ladies separately, what do they mean to you? And when you hear them combined, do they mean something different? Mm. Powerful means to me uh, that inner strength, that inner trust, that belief in the self. And the willingness to risk things for happiness and for the vision. Mm -hmm. And ladies, I think of my sisters, my friends, my soul sisters, my clients. And when you put them together, that's the magic. That empowered self leading from that place of, and being okay with balancing the feminine and masculine energy. Mm-hmm. And being yourself fully, not trying to fit into the patriarchy, yeah. but being your fully yourself within the constructs of your own standards and values and all of that. I think that's a hard thing for people to wrap their head around, like being your full self, yeah. like especially for people who, you know might feel stuck or I can or struggling. Right. Like what's possible for people when they step into their full self? Exponential joy. (laughs) Exponential joy, deep self-trust. So much more fun and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So much more abundance in all forms. When I talk about wealth, I mean wealth, but I, I mean everything. Trust, love, connection, joy, passion, all of that. Mm -hmm. It's just more fun when you're fully yourself because it takes so darn much energy to be something that you're not, whether it is to hold on a mask, to censor your words, to edit your woo, like to take (laughs) your, your weirdness, quote unquote, weirdness out of the conversation to not fully be yourself takes so much energy. And when you start peeling back those layers and you let little bits of yourself come out and then you really step into who you are, that's a really powerful energy. I just got waves of goosebumps, like somebody (laughs) really needed to hear that. (laughs) And I think so often we don't even realize that we're not ourselves until right. there's a wake-up call that happens because mm-hmm. it's so easy to be distracted and consumed by just the everyday to-do list and schedule and all the things so 
I see so often that people wake up one day and they go, wait, what's happening? Who, who approved this life and this plan? Um, for That's someone so who's just realizing that they're maybe stuck or they aren't on the right path, how, like, what would it look like to work with you if they're like, I don't know what the issue is. I don't know where I'm stuck. I don't know if there's trauma or not. Like, how mm-hmm. do you start when someone just shows up and goes, I don't know, but it's not here. Sure. So most people know if there was that turning point in their life. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we forget that that can be connected because we've been trained to believe, I think, that anxiety and stuckness are like drop out of the sky on you, <laughs> but they don't, right? It's our ego trying to keep us in status quo. It's our ego trying to keep us from changing and growing. And so what I do, I do a consultation with everybody because I love to meet everybody and I like to know their stories and I like to honor their stories and, and where they've come from. And I want to hear their vision for their life. Mm -hmm. Or even if they have a vision for a vision, they don't even know what it is yet. So I ask them things about their history. And during that consultation, we usually create a roadmap Mm -hmm. because during I've become very adept at helping them discover what the core of the situation probably is. Most likely, it's not an absolute, but most likely we know what what started this and creating a plan to heal it and to heal the things, the experiences that have happened between that first one and the current day. And really just little by little unlocking the self. Because we peel back layers. Mm -hmm. We peel back, we heal this experience, we peel it back. And there's a subtle shift in, oh, I don't feel as stuck anymore. I don't feel as scared anymore. We peel back another layer, we heal another experience. Wow, that was really setting my passion free. And now I have sparks of joy about what I want to share with the world. We peel back another layer. And it is, wow, I really can love myself. I can appreciate myself. I'd, and we peel back another layer. And I don't have to be in judgment of other people either. Yeah. And we keep peeling <laughs> back these layers. And pretty soon we're so much more ourselves. Because when we are truly ourselves, we are loving being. Mm-hmm. And that's such a, so much more joyful space, isn't it? Well, it's, it's a, coming from a place of love allows so much room, I think. You know, when there's, if it feels icky, like whether it's how, you know, the divisiveness of things in the media or politics right now, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good because it's not coming from a place of love. Like (laughs) it's not about right or wrong, but it's not, it's not a place of love or commitment to greatness. And I, and I think that that's like, we're, humans are attuned to feeling that. And so when we feel it and we know it's wrong, we're like, oh, we don't want any more of that. But I think there's that process of like, how do we course correct? Because, um, you know, maybe this is super woo-woo of me, but I just believe if we, if we are back in that space of what we're committed to and coming from a place of love, like that's where anything's possible for ourselves, for the world, for fill in the blank. And I don't realize that people know we have to get to that first sometimes. Right. I, you know, I'll see clients who like are, are producing success, but like stuck, they're hitting this wall, hitting this wall, hitting this wall. And I don't spend a lot of time with clients in, in the why space. Like I don't go backwards so much. I'm much more in the action space. Mm -hmm. Um, but usually it's rooted in like, okay, what are you not dealing with? Right. So like, okay, who do you have to go and work with to deal with that? Because there's some, (laughs) The universe usually doesn't make you hit a wall over and over and over again for no reason. Like you're not getting something. You're not seeing it. You're not getting the lesson. Like there's something happening that you're, you know, six inches from the door. That would make it much easier. (laughs) Um, But, you know, we make it mean that it's about us or it's permanent or something else. And I'm like, no, if if you want something, you're doing all the, the right things. It shouldn't feel this way. So. Right. Something's out of alignment. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. And I don't think it's too woo okay. to want. You know, <laughs> I think that is 
<laughs> that's yes, it's spiritual, right? Yes, it's about our our relationship with ourselves and our higher power if we choose that. But love is the answer. Mm-hmm. Period. If it yeah. doesn't feel good, it's not coming from love. What you just said is so perfectly stated and so powerful and such a good starting place. If this doesn't feel good, I'm not operating from love, which means I'm operating from something rooted in fear. Mm -hmm. Do I want to be operating from fear? And then when you're in this place where you're starting to shift, you want to make these shifts. I think it is imperative to notice, but not be in a state of judgment with yourself. Notice, I keep doing the same thing every time. I see the door there, but something is keeping me from turning the knob. Or why do I keep hitting the wall six inches on the other side of the door when I know that there's there's something out there for me, but I'm not letting myself have it? Mm -hmm. Then it doesn't have to be, what is wrong with you? Why are you letting yourself have this? You could be so great. Everyone tells you you're wonderful. Like all the stories that we hear, right? Mm -hmm. All these Mm -hmm. piled on judgments. What if it is as simple as putting your hand on your heart and saying to yourself, what do you really need right now? Mm -hmm. And listening and then creating space and a practice of listening to yourself. And then getting support if you need it. I value coaching so much. There isn't a year in my practice for the last decade that I haven't had a coach or multiple coaches. And and the support space is so beautiful. There's so much opportunity to get the support that you want and gets to be easier. Yeah, you have to have a coach and a community. And and I agree with you. It's like multiple, like... (laughs) There's people who can help in so many different ways, right? And Mm -hmm. if we look at, you know, I've been watching a lot of football because it's all the playoffs right now, but everyone's talking about like, how is Tom Brady doing this? And it's like, oh, because let's look at the team of coaches Tom Brady has. There's Mm -hmm. how many just on the football team and then a trainer and then a nutritionist. He has his branding person. There's a PR person. There's a million people who are all on team Brady. Right. And if we want to have a life like that, we have to allow and request that our team gets built around us. Like it's one, it's more fun as you were talking about earlier. And two, it's like, we are so bad at coaching ourselves. And I, I know as a coach myself, I get in this loop. Sometimes I have a coach, but I'll get mm-hmm. into this loop of trying to coach myself through something and then be like, why am I even trying? Like my first reaction is to try. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> Just step away, back up, write it down, call your coach. (laughs) Like, why are we wasting our time? Just why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be an incredible waste of time and energy, really, to try to see our way out of a place. It's like trying to get Mm -hmm. the truck unstuck from the mud and there's only mud around. Yeah. How do we see our way out of it? Yeah. It's really, it can be really hard to do that. And we can be such lone wolves. And I am guilty of this completely where I will just go and just try to sort it out by myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't ask for support. I don't even at times, especially when I was dealing with that anxiety, I didn't even know what to ask because I didn't think there was a way out. Mm -hmm. And if you call a coach and say, I need, I need help finding a way out. That's a perfect opening question. It's so fun we to will get help that you. question. <laughs> yes, we will help you create a roadmap. Mm-hmm. And what a gift you will give yourself by investing that time and that energy yeah. in making that change and allowing that support. I feel like the, well, I just signed on a client not very long ago who said to me, I could hire another employee or I could hire you for the year. Mm-hmm. And I know that hiring you for the year is going to give me greater value because I need someone who will support me where I am rather than someone I have to teach to be Mm -hmm. supportive of me where I am. Yeah. And you don't even know if you need those people until you talk to somebody most of the time. Like, right. It's yeah. It's amazing to me. I, I just had a, through a podcast guest recommendation, a friend of mine who was on 
we were talking about human design. And so I went and got my human design. I'll include the link in the show notes for the one that I took. Um, But what I thought was so fascinating about it were two things. One, it was talking about like how each of us have like an, uh, an emotion or feeling that's like a signal from our body or our minds to us. And mine mm-hmm. is apparently frustration, which okay. is perfect because that shows up. I am, I get so impatient and so frustrated all the time. So I'm like, oh, that's my, that's my cue that something's off. Perfect. I'm very in tune with that one. But the part that really was like a, ugh, like seeing it in the mirror and you didn't want to was it said, you're such a logical person, but you can't logic yourself out of all of your issues. Oh, uh, so yes. It, like I, I use logic, but I'm an intuitive decision maker. And they're like, mm. if you're stuck, it's because you're trying to logic your way out of an intuitive decision. So like, good luck, but you got to give it up. <laughs> and I was I, like, no, I don't like, just let me <laughs> logic out of this. It was so frustrating. And so I've really been focusing, as you mentioned, on coming back to getting grounded and like listening again, because it's so easy to stop listening to yourself, especially if you're in, I think, a success space of Mm -hmm. flow and it's working and things are moving. And then you're like, wait, I can't hear myself anymore because I started going way too fast on this path. So like having to get grounded again has been that's been the process I've been going through in the past couple of months. Um, how often do you see someone where the answer they need is just to like get back in touch with themselves from that perspective? Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody. It's a process. The work that I do with people is a process. It begins with getting back in touch with the self and then going deep to do the healing. And um, I'll tell you a personal experience that just has been occurring. Um, my team and I have had like six losses since the middle of December. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's been really rough. And two of us have had COVID. <sighs> Take a breath, right? Uh-huh. And what I did was give myself a day off. I just cleared the whole calendar gave myself a day off, no expectation, not I'm going to try to read six books. I'm going to try to listen to these webinars. I did nothing I didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. I did the dishes. I didn't want to do the dishes, but I did the dishes anyway. <laughs> I watched a frivolous movie. I snuggled with my dogs. I looked out the window. It's very, very cold here. So I didn't go outside very much, but I looked out the window a lot. And what happened was I gave myself breathing room. Mm -hmm. to hear myself again and not be in the place of I've got to take care of other people because there's a lot of caretaking that's happening Mm -hmm. where we're trying to care for other people who don't a haven't asked us to care for them and b aren't receiving the care yeah we want things to be better for them and it's easier to focus outward so we're trying to care for other people and we get to bring that energy back to ourselves where it is actually useful Mm -hmm. because nobody is going to change unless they decide to. Yeah. So we get to decide, I'm going to take that energy and give it back to myself. And after that day off, I I felt like sparks of inspiration (laughs) and excitement and all of these ideas were popping through. Like I, my pen could not keep up with my mind when I was journaling. Mm -hmm. And that was just one day. Imagine if you get, if you cultivate a lifestyle where you're listening to yourself, you're listening to your intuition, you've healed this trauma that gets really, really loud and you get yourself into the present and you start taking action. You're talking about being in that taking action space. Mm -hmm. So you're taking aligned action. It doesn't even have to be perfect. Just action somewhere in the direction of where you want to be. And celebrating those successes and releasing that judgment. We create so much space between our thoughts by releasing that judgment. That's like a beautiful recipe for freedom. Mm-hmm. When, when people come to you, do they even, like, I know from my experience when a, a coaching client comes to me, they're coming to me with a business problem and I know 
I'm like, that's a cute problem, but that's not really the issue. <laughs> is that the exact same experience you have where you're like, oh, I know you think you want to do that, but I bet it's this instead. Like, are you, do you see that with your, with people who come to you where like, we can't see past whatever's on fire that we like can't get to the source in the same way that you, yeah. you see it right away. Yes, because often the thing that we're looking at, we think is the problem, but it's actually a symptom. Mm -hmm. Like anxiety is actually a symptom of stuff that's not resolved. Yeah. Panic is a symptom of stuff that is not resolved that your brain thinks is still happening. So it's got to create this feeling to try to protect you. Anger is there's it's not resolved. Mm -hmm. Stuckness in our business, wanting to get some traction. There's yep. And not being able to take the step, not letting ourselves be visible. These are symptoms of something else. So like you said, we can see the fire, but there's something that's feeding the fire. Mm -hmm. So that is probably the first thing we talk about is, and I'll always create it as my belief, right? That yeah. this, my belief is that anxiety is a symptom. Mm -hmm. And that you don't have to suffer with it. And it's not going to be the way you are for the rest of your life, unless that's what you want. And some people yeah. do want that. Some people have identified with it in such a way that they don't want to change that about themselves, yeah. which is fine. I help people who want to be helped and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So speaking of that, you know, so many people I know struggle in that space, people who are heart-led uh, guides and caregivers but right. you want to help everyone, but not everybody wants the help. How do you resolve that on a case by case basis? Like, how do you let it go so that you can honor that you, they cross your path, but like, then come back to the people who want it? Like, what does that process look like for you? For me personally, that lesson has come up a few times mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, since I was a little kid, I've been the one that people come to for advice. Yeah. And for help. And then I became a hypnotist and a coach and all of these other things that I know these modalities for. And I love being the person, like trust is my love language. So if you yeah. want to trust me with something, I will, I will figure out a way to help you get the result that you want. And for a situation that I was in, it bled into a, a really close friendship. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to help them resolve the symptom, but there was a greater thing happening behind the scenes that I was not, a, not given that information about. In fact, it was covered up as I, it turned out she had told me of this big lie for a long time. And that was really painful. And it helped me remember that it is not my job to try to save everyone. Mm -hmm. I don't have the energy, the bandwidth to do that. I get to help people who really want to be helped, who are willing to invest the time and the effort and their resources so that they can make that shift for themselves. Mm -hmm. That was a very, is a very powerful message that I earned early on with my clients because I was trying to make things good enough for them. Well, if the only time you can come in is 8 p.m. on Wednesday, I'll be here. Right. Or if you can only pay this amount this time, that's fine. And I was working with, uh, with people who had real problems, of course. They were just not in a place of where I prefer my clients to be now, which is a readiness to, to change the problem. Choosing themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. The people I worked with at the beginning of my career, some of them were excited for a change, but they wanted me to do it. Yeah, they they wanted to try to get out of all the the part where there was feeling and effort and all that stuff, which I understand that's hard. Yeah, but the people I work with now are more understanding. Most of them are coaches or healers themselves, so they have a really strong understanding that we get to go deep and it gets mm -hmm. to be a spiritual experience. And you get to feel, and it's not a have to; it's a get to. Yeah, yeah. No, I, um, if my coach is listening to this episode, she's going to be so happy that we're, that you just brought that up. Cause we were talking literally last night in my, in my, um, call about, you know, recalibrating boundaries. I'm a big believer that the things that we 
have to deal with, like will come up as we keep expanding just in different ways. Mm -hmm. And boundaries is one that I think for everybody keeps coming up at different levels because as you expand, the boundaries shift. The policies have to also level up when you do. And I'm in that place right now of exactly what you said, like who, who wants to do the work and then who wants myself or my team to do the work and, and like having to step into that calling out of like, okay, what are you avoiding? What are you not taking on? Why is this not important? And I love that you brought up the calendar piece because so many people, the key to transforming their business is deciding their time first Mm -hmm. and the clients have to fit into that time. And, you know, for both of us who have done that for clients, like the clients don't go away. (laughs) What you say, I'm only available these times. Mm -hmm. They figure out a way to make it shift. And I think it's such a lesson for being a stand for what works for you in life in general, because we're so, you know, stereotypically women in particular are so good at bending all the way over until we break. And Mm -hmm. it's like, you don't have to do that. Like, you know, when we think about our dream clients or our favorite people to spend time with, they're never the people asking us to bend even halfway across. It's like, yes, it's always people who are like, all right, got my hand. I got your hand. Let's go. And like, that's it. And we get so nervous to like, not even say no to people, but just say, here are the new rules. Right. What tips do you have for people who want to put a new boundary in or, or put out new rules? How can they do it in a way that's powerful? So when I think of boundaries, I think of we reach a boundary and we recognize that something has to shift. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what I like to do is to set a standard. Because a boundary, if we're trying to hold a boundary, and because I think a lot of people get this uh feeling like we have to hold this boundary, right? So then we're on guard all the time. Mm -hmm. Defense, defense, defense. We're thinking about football, right? That we're trying to hold everybody back. Mm -hmm. And there's an energy there that says, if you just push me hard enough, I'll give you what you want. Yeah. Or there's going to be a fight. Mm -hmm. If you push me too hard, because I've worked with women who are like, I've set all these standards and I'm ready to fight for them or I've I've set all these boundaries and I'm ready to fight for them. But when we use the word standard and we step into the place of standard, the rules are matter of fact. Mm -hmm. I only do sessions on on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll do a makeup session on a Monday. Yeah. That's the way I operate. Mm -hmm. I only do consultations on Mondays. Mm -hmm. That's the way I operate. And not every Monday is available because I like to take time off to energize myself so I'm ready for my clients. I don't, uh, for me, a standard is um, that I don't work with people who, uh, let's see, it's actually not, not so much about what I don't do, it's what I do. I work with people who are willing to make change. Mm -hmm. I work with people who want to go deep on a spiritual level. So these, the standards are more about what I want rather than what I don't want. Yep. And then that creates that energy of attracting what I do want rather than putting all of this energy into a boundary and attracting what I don't want, Mm -hmm. which is a heck of a lot more fun. Yep. When um, I do a workshop about boundaries and I'm like, if the biggest thing I see for people to shift with the boundary conversation is like, stop making it a square that has sharp pointy edges, make it a sacred circle, please. Yes. Hallelujah. It's it's like (laughs) what, you know, and in my mind, I'm thinking like hocus pocus and like the salt. (laughs) But (laughs) it's like, what do you, what do you want to protect and honor? Because that's what this is for. Yes. If, 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 uh. If it's really hard to be a stand for the people we care about and the the gifts, you know, as you were talking about earlier, that we are to the world and the people we're serving, if we aren't honoring that, um, the machinery in particular that we are, <laughs> and yeah. it's it's um, and there's a difference between going through sprints of like 
stretching and having to be um, in less flow state, but that shouldn't be the norm from, in my opinion, because that's the, that's the burnout plan. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If we're not allowing in flow, if we're not getting fueled, it is very quickly reaching burnout. And I Mm -hmm. don't think people even realize that they're burned out until months after they're burned out, where they're really like, the fumes are gone. There's not even, we're not even running on fumes anymore. We're just running on some sort of a survival mode Mm -hmm. that is very painful. And coming back into the boundaries being encircling a sacred space or a sacred process or your sacred energy. Mm -hmm. (sighs) That's a beautiful thing. (laughs) That's an honoring of the whole process. Mm -hmm. And really what I want my clients to feel is that their life is a sacred experience. How beautiful is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of it gets to be a piece of that. And it gets to be as special and beautiful as you can make it so that you feel completely devoted to it. Devoted to your desire and devoted to your gifts and not because the world needs them, but because you need to share them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there are many people right now who are very inspired by you. Um, But first, I'm going to ask you, before we share how we can connect with you, I want to ask you where you put yourself on the powerful lady scale. Zero is the average everyday human. 10 is the most powerful lady possible. Where would you put yourself today? And where do you think you would put yourself on average? Hmm. I feel like I'm an 8.8 today. And probably in that like, like... Seven, eight, nine range. And there are days when it pops up to that 10 <laughs> and everything's clicking, right? Because it's a practice. Yeah. And then there are days where, you know, things are a little rough and you got to give yourself a day off, you know, so it does mm-hmm. go down a little bit. But I like, I think I'm, I'm pretty good working in that like seven, eight, nine range most of the time. Yeah. All right. Perfect. And for everyone who is excited to work with an 8.8 to and to a 7.9, <laughs> um, and just who's really inspired by what you shared today and, and your approach to, you know, honoring your own life and making that sacred, where can they find you, follow you, support you, all the things? Oh, there are lots of ways, but the easiest thing to do is to go to RebeccaWiener.com, W-I-E-N-E-R.com and book a call with me. The our first call is my gift to you. If you're ready to make some change, just contact me there. That would be the the best and most fun way to do it. And you can also find me if you want to join uh, my community, Inner Circle with Rebecca dot com. Uh, will direct you to my Facebook community, um, and then you can find me all over social media and all that good stuff too. I love it. Um, well, we have a very powerful community of powerful ladies and. Yeah. I am asking guests this year, how can we support you? What do you need? What do you want? What are you manifesting? Mm. Thank you. You're First welcome. of all, that's such an incredibly generous question. And it's that generous spirit that adds to your power, right? Because you know that there's no scarcity as you're being so generous, which it creates such beautiful flow. So thank you for that question. You're welcome. I would love to fill my Extraordinary Wealth program with some amazing, powerful ladies who are ready to come home to themselves, learn a bunch of tools to release limiting beliefs and anxiety and and all the gunk and really step into the life of their vision. And if they're not sure what the vision is, find that along the way as we create space for it. So they can reach out to me for any questions about Extraordinary Wealth. I would really love that too. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, well, yeah, I just, I'm a big believer that everything we need is one request and one person away. Yeah. And, you know, that's, there's people right now who are thinking of ways to connect you and that's the one, right? That just hit it. So perfect. I love um, it. But it has been such an honor to have you today. Thank you for being a yes to me and to the Powerful Ladies podcast and to sharing your story with everyone listening. Oh, you're an easy yes. 
You're an easy yes. <laughs> and your community is an easy yes. Thank you so much, Kara. I appreciate it. All the links to connect with Rebecca are in our show notes at thepowerfulladies.com. Please subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening and leave us a rating and review that helps so much to get this podcast visibility and to help us connect with more listeners like you. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to hang out more, please come hang out on Instagram at Powerful Ladies. And if you want to connect directly with me, visit caradeppy.com where you can book an intro call and see all my other products and services where we can hang out. Or of course, come follow me on Instagram at Kara underscore Duffy. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Until then, I hope we're taking on being powerful in your life. Go be awesome and up to something you love.